art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet to thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. And midnight will I rise to give thanks unto thee. Hello there, good day, welcome to Line by Line Bible Studies. We're continuing our study today in the book of Psalms. We're going to do Psalm 119. We're going to get right into it. We already talked about it yesterday. Okay, one second. All right, we're ready to go. <clears throat> I will not read the letters. LF, I'm not going to say that. Just know it's there. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all thy judgments, all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches, I will meditate on thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also shall sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul cleaveth to the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I hid before me. I'm sorry. My bad vision. L.A. look like H. <laughs> my judgments have I laid before me. It just sounded wrong. Pardon me. I have stuck to thy testimonies. O oh Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. 
Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not unto covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servants, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. For I trust in thy word, and take not the, wo and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved. And I will meditate in thy statutes. I'm going to take a drink here. It's actually exactly halfway. <clears throat> if my math was right. No, it's not right, Paul. That's not exactly. <laughs> that's exactly less than a quarter of the way. What am I talking about? Forty. There's a hundred. Not seventy-six verses, Paul. And that doesn't work out either. That'd be ninety-six. Well, I got nothing. No, no, that would be a hundred. Forty-eight plus forty-eight is ninety-six. Yeah. What are you thinking, boy? My math. If my math is right. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Remember the word unto thy servant. Upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in derision. Yet I have not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments of old, O Lord. And have comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me. Because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remember thy name, O Lord, in thy night, and have kept thy law. This I had, because I kept thy precepts. Now in my portion, O Lord, I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me, according to thy word. I thought on my ways, and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight will I rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am become a, I am become a, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Ke teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness before my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. 
Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, and I be not ashamed. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become as a, wild, as a bottle in the smoke. My song got in the way. I've closed my eyes and I was almost going to break into it. Yet I do not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have dig pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon the earth. But I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth forever, O Lord. Thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. They continue to this day according to thy ordinances. For all are thy servants. Unless the law had been my delights, I should have then perished in my affliction. I would never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words to my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth. O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet do not I forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes alway, even unto the end. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, that I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to my oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good, and let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation, and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according to thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding, that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. I have a drink here. 
And when I'm when I'm done reading, would you come in here and bring me more bring more water? Or go get it and fill it. <laughs> Wait till I'm done though. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou used to do to those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach my, me thy statutes. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. I need to clear my uh, throat here. Hold on. I shall live. I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I, I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. I hoped in thy word. Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice. According to thy loving kindness, O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Consider mine affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet do not I decline from thy testimonies. I behold thy transgressors. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning. Every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee, because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation, and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise. When thou hast taught me thy statutes, my tongue shall speak of thy word. For all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So there we go. And that would be, you know, I would call it, characterize that as, a, as the prayer of a, of a servant, of a servant of the Lord. And, it, and, it, and it's a certain kind of characteristic uh, of an attitude. 
you know, one of the things I emphasize all the time is how, you know, our um, salvation is based on Jesus' death on the cross, not based on my works. But the thing is, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I just go. I don't want to open this. Save this for later. Just do as I said. Okay. Anyways, um, so let me go back to verse one. Oh, not one hundred one. Verse one, and I don't think I'm going to read that all for the rest of the time. We're we're only going to read that all at once that one time, and from now on we're just going to take one piece at a time because there is a lot of repetition. I like that, but it's fun to do that whole thing, and then you get a portrait, you get that whole thing at once. And you see, it, it reminds me of the flow of prayer. If you're in a, especially when you're in a difficult situation, I wouldn't expect, you know, there's only one Psalm 119. You may only have one moment in your whole life where you pray that prayer. Thank you, sweetheart. We you pray a prayer of that nature, or of that, that, that intensity. Yeah, you know I mean, like Jesus in Gethsemane, could you not watch for me, with me for one hour? His prayer might have gone on a bit. I don't know. But they fell asleep, so they kind of immediately fell asleep, and his prayer was pretty short, actually, at least what's recorded, right? And we don't know all what, because it's all, it, you know, the Gospels make it clear that they didn't write everything down. Uh, you know, that's fine. <laughs> it's the abridged version of Jesus' gospel. In fact, all the gospels could be thought of. Don't think of them as biographies. Think of them as highly abridged, you know, like a Reader's Digest versions, literally, of his life. Not literally, but <clears throat> almost literally. All right. <laughs> and um, I think I the reason I made it into a song, and you've been hearing bits of it, and you can download that song from my webpage, oraclesofgod.org. I believe I'm going to just make sure I say things like that. On the songs page, because I, I like listening to it sometimes. It's, um, I don't think there's too many errors in it. <laughs> I, I only recorded two versions of it, and um, it's a hard song to, I mean, it's a hard chapter to read. It's a hard song to play unbroken. Also, I think I did, did that once, and I recorded it, and that was my scratch version. And where is it, Paul? It's under the album, I think, like a uh, hammer. No, no, it's not. It's under "I Love, Therefore I Hate." Was I like thinking that? Where where did I put it? Hmm. I'm curious about that because I guess people might ask, and I don't want to have you have to ask. Oh yeah, there. Um, studio recordings not associated with an album on the bottom, very left, the on the very on the left hand column of songs. There's two columns on the songs page. It was a column of text, but the left hand column all the way at the bottom, the last link is Psalm 119. I don't know which one it is, but it definitely works. It's a 28 minute song. And let's see, that was a 23 minute read, so it's faster. Yeah, I thought the song would be longer. But I like to listen to that for meditative. Certain times in my life, it really uh, speaks to me. It always really speaks to me, but I mean, sometimes more so than others. Oh, wait, that's going to be all dark. Let's get back to. My lighting is oraclesofgod.org. That's not oraclesofgod.org. That's Google. Yuck. I don't even know why I ever use them anymore. Yeah, except for, well, I mean, it's like I should limit my use. I do try to use other things. I don't want to, like, um, I mostly don't care about, like, uh, you know, like, oh, you know what I buy. You know, it's like, I don't feel like I, I have, like, to hide. Oh, Paul, what do you buy in there? You know, it's like. Uh, and they, but I don't like the idea of them making money off me and also censoring me at the same time. So that's a problem, you know? So I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> Blessed are the undefiled in the way. <clears throat> again, each of these eight verse sections begins with all the verses in them in Hebrew begin with Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is much like our A. It is, but it is, it's funny. It's they, they're missing a lot of vowels, and it sort of isn't a vowel, oddly. I mean, uh, anyways. Eh, don't, don't take anything I say about, about that too seriously. Now, when we talk about being, I was saying before about the gospel. We know we're saved through the gift of Jesus Christ, right? But this is still very meaningful to me as a Christian. As someone who believes and understands that I'm assured of salvation, yeah, I know I'm all assured and all that blessed assurance. I, I teach 
what some people would call what one says always saved but i don't even like that characterization because you know i don't like thinking of myself as saved even though i do because i know god's promises are sure and that's the way the gospel characterizes it it's perfectly acceptable to say i got saved i am saved but the actual salvation is me rising from the dead that's salvation when jesus rose from the dead that was what has to happen to me unless i live to the very end you know we shall not all sleep but He's done this for us. I'm, I'm exceedingly thankful. He is my Lord. I'm his servant. Now, I'm not required technically to do anything to be saved more. Of course not. I just, I'm with the program. How are you not with the program? He died for your sins. Like you, you understood that you were guilty in the whole part. You got to understand that whole thing. Like, I once was lost. I now I'm fine. When I'm a sheep that's gone astray. Yeah, and even as a servant, you still go astray. Right? I've gone astray like a lost sheep. I've, I've done that. Like, I, like I'm some dumb sheep that gets lost. Where are you going, Paul? What are you doing? You know? What are you, gonna, what are you doing? Come on. Over here. Where's the rod? You know? Sometimes you got to hit the sheep with a rod. Not to kill them. Not to injure them. God forbid you don't want to injure your animal. Then it's even harder to take care of them. You know? You just... Let them know that that's not where they're supposed to go. That's not what they're supposed to do. Right? And you're under a, a, re, a regime of correction. It, Paul makes this clear. Well, in the, the book of Hebrews. So maybe not Paul, but Paul, I think Paul also makes it clear. But I was thinking specifically of Hebrew. Hebrews, he chastens every beloved son. Wait, what is, who says without chastisement in the New Testament? I, I, sometimes it's a, near the end of that. Oh, wrong keyboard, Paul. Chastisement. Hopefully I spelled it right, but not in... I wasn't looking in the book of Acts. I was looking for New Testament. Oh, I just want it all, and we want it out of the book of the New Testament. All right. Yeah, it is Hebrews 12. I kind of... That chapter was in my mind. I don't trust myself to cite scripture that, that specifically, but it was Hebrews. All right. But, uh, you know, if you be without chastisements, it's like you're not his son. You know, it's like you're not his servant. So, of course, sometimes there is affliction of servants. But you notice even in this, though, there is a lot of I do what you say. I do what you I, do, I keep your commandments. I do all those things. And it feels like, OK, works based salvation, but not really. I mean, it's like, yes, I do all those things, but I'm still going astray like a lost sheep. I don't do. I still need the mercy of God. As so I said, there was no works-based salvation in the Old Testament. It was always mercy and the sacrifices and like God accept God has to accept it all, and you don't really know. That's why you don't hear a lot of like um um you know when it talks about salvation, it's like very much like, how about it, Lord? Let me live. There's not a lot of believe in Jesus and you will live. Believe in me and you will though there is, there is. You know, but do what I say, listen to me. Keep my word and you will live. Yes, in the Old Testament. But not specifically forever. Yeah, I mean, not very often. It is, you know, there is not that same promise of eternity, so to speak, or um, everlasting life to come. I always try to avoid to use the word eternity because I want, to me, that I think of that as not just the future, but also the past. An eternity past is not accessible. I, I think, I think. I don't know. That's the assumption. You know, that's an assumption of... Uh, it, would, it, would, it would be strange to go back in time with God to when God did other things. You know what I mean? Like made dinosaurs or something like that. Or maybe... um, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. All I'm glad is my sins are getting blotted out. And that's why I came to Jesus. Okay. And I don't want to be cavalier about that. I do not want to take that lightly. The Lord Jesus was not a light dude. All right? He was not a light dude. L read the parable of the talents. It's quite obvious. If you just take this thing up and you're like, eh. Or the parable of the, the wedding garment where the guy came in and he didn't have a wedding garment on. The righteousness of saints. He didn't have that on. And he, you know, he, he thought he could just come in like a slob into God's kingdom, you know, in his street clothes to the wedding feast. You know, this is all metaphorical as far as I'm concerned, because it's like what it's really a portrait of 
is someone who is derelict in their faith. I mean, their faith is not a real, it's not something, their faith is more like the way a Christian is a Christian. I mean, their faith, their Christianity is very comparable to the Christianity of a country. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, oh, it's a Christian country. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's Hungary. They're a Christian country. Or um, Russia. Every Russian is, you know, except for the ones that are not. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it's like they, they call themselves a Christian country explicitly. America does not. We, you know, we have a separation of church and state. But honestly, when you talk about the separation of church and state, that is, it implies that it's a Christian country. You know what I mean? Because you know I mean? it's like, <clears throat> no, no, we don't want to. What, what about mosques? You know, no, ch- it's church and state. My, they would be like, they would have. Because remember, the people that founded this country were a lot more intolerant than we are. And, uh,. And also, it's like, why would they even want to come live among, you know, they would have come and started their own colony. That's the way they would have looked at it. Just like where at first it was the Dutch over here and the English over there. Only The colonies merged later. And even to this day, there's still like that sort of, like the French, like the, the people in Quebec, the French up there have a certain attitude of like, oh, we're French, we speak French, you know? It's just like we do the Americans, we have a certain attitude, right? I'm not trying to say that, <laughs> that it's like, it's, it's only other people. All right. We have to walk in the ways of the Lord as believers. Not because it's our salvation, it's because it's because it's our duty, man. He gave us talents and told us to occupy till he comes. You don't go burying that in the earth like a I was using an old term from my childhood, whatever. Like a like a like a like a stupid person, a person who is without their senses. Who would bury their the thing they had been committed as a trust and told they were supposed to, you know, profit in it for, for, for the Lord's sake to do something more with it. You know, when he was on the earth, he didn't just like, you know what I mean? Like that picture of Jesus, oh, he was just partying it up. He was hanging out with sinners. He was just, hey, I'm the Messiah. I'm here. Everyone's getting saved. You get saved. You get saved. You get saved. You get saved. Right. That's not what it was. We're like, are there many to be saved? He's like, yes. No, no, I mean, <laughs> are there few that be saved? And he basically, his answer was like, yeah, yeah, few. Of course, I'm, I'm <laughs> paraphrasing. Wait, wait, wait. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go, since I did that, because you know what? Lord, are there few that be saved? And Luke 13, and he said unto them, that's right. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. I say for I for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know not, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which be first and there are first which shall be last. The same day there came certain Pharisees. I mean, that was his answer. Lord, are there few that be saved? Well, he didn't really answer. He's saying, I'll tell you what. And I would say this too. It's, it's not about the the, the how few are saved so much as it is there's so there's a poverty of ways to get saved there aren't like all these ways to get saved it's a narrow way it's a straight way there's a one way and that's jesus christ through faith in him but the point is faith in him means keeping faith with him that means he gives you that talent and trust you have faith well, now you, you're expected to do something with it. You are saved on the basis of it. But if you treat it like it's some sort of technical thing that you've accomplished, 
If you legalistically say, well, I believe these things as facts and I can sin some more, that grace may abound. So don't talk to me about what I need to do as a Christian. I don't have to do a thing. You know what? You're a wicked servant and you will be cast out and you will wail and, and grind your teeth when you see yourself thrust out of that kingdom. I mean, what could be worse? You know, you get so close. And people try to enter in. That's the th thing. You think, okay, how could they not? I'm not trying to go in to the it's a pretty obvious entry point. You know what I mean? It's like it's very visibly straight, it's straight and narrow. It's not <clears throat> it's not like confusing. Like there's a broad, oh, where are we going, man? I don't know. It's like down to a pinpoint. Christ, <clears throat> the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, has set the example. He is that perfect way. And um, it is narrow. And the way you stick closest to it and make sure you're on it is by, you know, again, like all these things it says. It's his word. It's his testimonies. His laws. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be, I don't mean necessarily Old Testament law. All this in my mind gets upgraded for the New Testament, for the gospel, for the law of Christ, for the testimony of Jesus. You know, all the things like I always say. That's what it's about to me. Not about the law of Moses. Though you are blessed to. You know, the law of Moses is something. It's a schoolmaster to learn from. We'll eventually do the law. I've taught Deuter I've taught Deuteronomy in the past and I don't in Exodus, but I've never done Leviticus and Numbers like officially. So, you know, or maybe I didn't do numbers, but now Leviticus or something like that. Or maybe portions of it. Because I looked at it, I remember one point I thinking I could do portions of it. As as meaningful, other than just reading genealogies, like because numbers is a, quite a bit of genealogy. Because <laughs> they're numbered and you know, who's there. So blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Now, th there are the, the special words in this book. I forgot if Waze was one of them. I'm going to actually do a little cheating because I, I don't want to like try to pick them apart. I'm just going to mention it here at the beginning of the study. And um, is it, why do I think it's 10 words? Because 10 seems like a good number for something when we're talking about the law in the word. I just like that there's such a con you know what's interesting is how broadly that speaks to us. And there's so much more word now and yet it still speaks just as strongly. Oh, there's Isaiah. I probably should have just gone to the uh, actual psalm. Miscellaneous phenomena. The psalms. Quotations. The acrostic psalms. Uh, maybe, oh shoot, no, I'm sticking together. Well, this is starting to get boring. Okay, it must be actually in the text of that psalm. But there are ten peculiar words. It's like law, testimony, and I'm going to bring up all of them here. Here we go. All right. The ten peculiar words. We have way, the first of the ten words. And then, according to this, the law is the sixth in order of the ten words. See Appendix 73. Wait a second. Okay. Okay. I want to see it, and I'll, and I'll show it to you. I'll hold it up anyways. <laughs> no, it's nothing to see here. See, it's just, all you would see is my color coding of the 10 words. Because I used orange for way, which is derek or darak. The way. Testimonies. It's, okay, testimonies. Iduth. Precepts. I'm not going to try to pronounce. Pikudim. I did. <laughs> Commandments is mitzvah. From Zavah to set up. I could read it, but I'm not going to read all the definitions. Then we have word, law, Torah, judgment, which is mishpat, mishpat righteousness, which is zedek. And then there is statute and word. So we have way, testimonies, precepts, commandments, word. Hmm. I, I'll bring up those definitions as we go by. In the thing from Bible Hub. I'm sorry, I, you know, I was looking at there and I'm like, I just wanted them all at once. 
undefiled in the way, who walk in the laws of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, that seek him with a whole heart. So let's look at testimonies in Bible Hub. Now we know law is Torah. Well, maybe we should look at that too. Let's look at each of the words. Let's just start with way. I'm going to bring it up right now on your screen. There we go. Blessed are the undefiled the way. And that is, of course, direct. We read it, but here, to a way, a road, distance, journey, manner. And it means exactly what you think. And it has a wide variety of applications, of course, if you're talking about you know, metaphorically, a road is trodden figuratively a course of life or mode of action, often used in an adverbial sense. Hmm. So the law is the Torah. And though we've, like I said, we've done this before, but these words are going to come up a lot in this psalm, so we're going to look at them each as they come. Direction, instruction, law. Yeah, Torah, I remember Arnold Murray always saying, came from the idea of pointing the way. It's, it's directing you. This is what you do. You know, as much as when you point the finger and say this, you know, it's, it's a directive. It's not something like, um, well, whatever, <laughs> from yara, and I bet that's the word that means something like to point the way or something. Let's say yara or yara, to throw or shoot. That's actually cool, even better, not to point, but to shoot. I don't know why he said, he always said it meant to point the way. Maybe it does, whatever. But I like the idea of throwing or shooting. That's even better. Because what does sin mean? To miss the mark. Right. You didn't hit the mark. The, the, the law shows you the, the place where the mark is you're shooting at. That's what you're trying to get at. That's what the right is. <clears throat> now, testimonies, we expect something to be a little different, but this is Ida. Testimony or witness, the things that are born witness to. It's, you know, you could say that like testimonies and laws and statutes, they're kind of similar, right? But there's a technical distinction, right? And that technical distinction, I mean, feminine of odd in its technical sense. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't on your screen. See, it says feminine of odd in its sense, testimony, testimony, witness. And this is what? A witness, a male. So that's a feminine Whatever, you know, testimonies. Like testimony, so whatever, it, it, it's, I think they do that because it is, it's feminine, not because it's a woman, but because just linguistically sometimes things are feminine and it makes them, um, you know, and so that's not a, a, a witness like me, a person, but a witness, a thing that's disembodied from that. And so they put it into the feminine so it would be other, I, I suppose. I mean, that's just me thinking about how language gets used and made. And the meaning of words is, you know, thinking about the meaning of words is critical to really understanding uh, on a certain level. It, and not that these are particularly hard words to understand, but it, it's good to have that nuance. So testimonies, the testimonies of the Lord. You say, well, what's the difference? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know in the law how you would exactly like scratch that out. Because I think it has more to do with the way you're looking at it. It's a law. Because uh, a law is to point the way or to shoot it. Like to, we're, I'm going to keep saying to point the way, all right? A directive, so to speak, an injunction like that sense. And a statute, I think, when we get to that word, or like precepts here, this is going to be a little different. And I'm not going to belabor this the whole time. We're getting this in today. And then as we go through the study, I'm not going to, you know, this is like part of laying the groundwork. This is choke, which is statutes. And so something proscribed, or prescribed, sorry, or owed, a statute. That's in a sense some, an obligation. You're obliged by statute to do something. You know, a little different than law. As far as like, they may both be laws, but it's a different concept. And that's what I would say. I, I, I think that some of these things are inside of each other, nested within each other. The law might be encompass a whole, like all of the writings of Moses, you might call it the law. But within it, you have the statutes and testimonies and the word of the Lord. You know, testimonies may make the form, a, a good example of a testimony is when he came to Abraham and said, this is what I'm going to do. And, it, and also, if you do this, this is what I'm going to do. 
That, that's a, a good example of t- what God has said and borne witness of, as opposed to things he's directing you to do. Now, he may bear witness and direct you to do something, which might be a law in that sense, and he may bear witness to that law, but the witness itself <laughs> is just when he bears witness. I can think of, it makes me think of uh, Deuteronomy 20 or uh, 23, or just in the Song of, song of Moses, the th- I live forever. That's not a law. That's not enough. That's God's bearing witness to the truth. And I might, you may also say that's his word, but again, all that he says is his word. So there's a different, you know, it's just a different aspect of a lot of the same things. And that, and that's why I would say also like our service to Christ is predicated on absorbing who he is. And that comes from the word. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. That's why I say the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy in the old Testament. We learn about more about being a Christian. Because it's still the, the schoolmaster. We just got to take our Christian understanding and the law of Christ with us. Just take your, just pack it up and bring it along with you in the Old Testament. And it, I don't, I wouldn't interpret, I mean, I just, I, I don't feel like it's like something artificial either. Because like I said, I don't agree with dispensationalists. Uh, you're saved by grace through faith in the Old Testament. I don't see any other way. I don't see people being saved by their perfect righteous works. You know, at the end of Moses' life, it was he died just before they entered the promised land, and it was kind of like it was a punishment. So, you know, I don't know that the Lord delayed any more that they were going. In, you know, the, it was forty years, and the carcasses were going to fall in the wilderness. I don't think he delayed even more after that to wait for Moses to finish out his life. You were going to enter the promised land, but now you're not. And you're just going to. We're going to wait here for you. Uh, you were going to have a couple more years. Oh wait, actually, you only have a few more minutes. I mean, it didn't go down just like that, but, you know, he kind of precipitously, they get to the end of the wandering, and he dies. And the Lord buries him, as it's, as it's written. No one knew the place of his burying. There was no grave of Moses. That's why some people thought he might come back as one of the two witnesses, because maybe he didn't really die. You know, but it says he died, so I'm always like, you know. It talked about disputing with the, over the bones of Moses. But that, you know, I don't, I don't even know what that means. You know, like, were they, you know, who would get them or where they are or, you know, what is the dispute? Be like, hey, you can't do that with the bones of Moses. I, I don't know. Okay. Back to the text. So this reasonable service of ours that Christ calls us to, it, there, we are to, you know, you're not saved by works, but that doesn't mean he doesn't expect you to work. D- don't be silly. It's like, it's just not the basis on which... You're saved. Well, he expects you to work, and if you don't, if you stubbornly refuse, and you don't want to conform to Christ, and you stubbornly refuse to, comp- at all, like, like stubbornly, you resist these things. I mean, they don't turn to, like, turn into actual Christians. I, I don't, I don't know what that. I don't know who is. That isn't once saved, always saved. That's not saved, never saved. That's what I put. That way, I call it. I believe in both. If you're saved, you were once saved, always saved, because you were saved from before the foundation of the world because of God's will. And if you're not saved, it's because you were never saved. And anything that happened in your life, you know, like they said, they're going to think they're going to be like, oh, we did all the, we should be saved. Wait a second. Hold on. We think we're saved. We did all this stuff too. We even worked. It's like you're workers of iniquity. I don't know you. I don't know you. And it's not that we've never sinned or that there's no, you know, but Hey, you know, it's like uh, not, not so carelessly, not cavalierly, not without thinking about it. Not like I got to change my ways. Not with like, I'm a sheep that's gone astray, Lord. You know, and like, I, I mean, I, I address the problem to my master. He's my master, man. And I gotta, I gotta, if I got a sin problem, I gotta talk to him about it. I'm not worried. I don't worry about it. Cause well, I do worry about it, but I mean, I don't, but in the sense, I don't worry about my salvation in regard to that because my salvation isn't based on that. So, but you, but you're expected to go through the motions of being a Christian, or trying to be, and so this still all I, this speaks deeply to my heart. If it didn't speak to your heart, and say, like, well, you know, it's all this very this for that, this for that. It's like a, uh, it feels very transactional. Does it really though? You know, and, and let's let's go through it now. I'm gonna put the spin on it the way I, as far as the Christian spin on it, and how how I think that it uh, it reads to me. Because it's like you want to be blessed. 
Yes, blessed are they that do not defile themselves in following Christ. Do not commit sins. Do not make Christ the member, you know, the members of Christ the members of an harlot. I mean, people act as if they can sin with impunity. I remember, it's funny because someone was reading a New York Times article I was listening to or something like that, and they were kind of bewildered because someone was being basically character assassinated. Some guy, they had a hit piece out on him for being a serial fornicator. He's like some wealthy, uh, smart guy, like, you know, close to my age, but he dates women and he's unmarried and stuff. Sometimes dates two at a time, right? And they don't know who he, he's got two girlfriends or whatever, but he hasn't committed to them necessarily, right? He just, you know, right? Like people do in the world these days, right? Now, I find it reprehensible. I think he's a fornicator. That's not a good thing to be. But <laughs> the guy couldn't, it's like, but there was nothing more than that in the article. And like, he hasn't committed adultery. No, there was nothing. And it was funny because in the world, they act all prudish as if this is a problem. And I agree, like, it, it would, it, baffles me because churches don't even care about fornication and some don't even care about worse than that you know now some churches they make you a second class citizen for being divorced and i think that's wrong a brother is not in bondage in such cases it's like god doesn't like divorce but remember moses suffered it for the hardness of men's hearts you know and a lot of things are like that and so what shall we not suffer it also for the hardness of men's hearts? A Christian should not initiate a divorce though. Uh, like if you're a believer, you know, in good standing or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, if you're a believer and you follow the Lord and you have a, a spouse, you shouldn't try to divorce them because that God, you know, you should try to make your marriage work and flourish and try to make it better. And it can be better. You know, mine started off good, but it got a lot better, which is cool. I love my wife more now than I did when I first fell in love with her. And usually people think of, usually it's, you know, it's like, you're like, oh, a, a person's new and I, oh, they they might be wonderful. And they're like, oh, you're riding high, right? The honeymoon period, as they call it. And then reality starts to set in. Well, fortunately, most of our relationship has been based on mostly reality. The only unreality were things that I didn't realize were still in my life. Because it's like when I met my wife, I wasn't looking at pornography. I was reading the Bible, and that's what I was into. You know, and some, sometimes I see why monks, you know, why the priests think, you know, don't get married at all. Because it is a distraction. If you don't have any women in your life, it's kind of easy to just put it all out of your mind. If you got one in your life, well, you know, then you got a woman in your life. And so a woman is something you might think about. Or a husband, or a wife, you know, if you're a woman, of course, a man in your life. But it's a good thing. You know, it's not, God is not, you know, he says it's not good for a man to be alone. And that doesn't mean you have to be married. It's good not to be alone. You should have fellowship. People shouldn't be lonely. You know, and there's nothing sad. There's a lot of lonely people, and I think that's always very sad because loneliness must be very painful. I don't know it. You know, and that's why I never lament my lack of it because <laughs> no sometimes i do feel lonely but that's for a different reason i'm not actually lonely sometimes i feel lonely in my distresses in my responsibilities because you know in this family i am the top i'm the father i'm the patriarch and so you know it's kind of like the president the buck stops here uh, and then you know it's me and then there's god you know i, I almost a long time ago I, I was meditating on writing a book <laughs> someday i may write a book i don't know if i have time but about fatherhood and stuff like that, patri patriarchy. And um, I think it was called Second to God. <laughs> because that's like the way it is in a home. It's like there's mom, then there's dad, and then there's the Lord. And that's quite a hierarchy. Notice there's no place for, <laughs> for anything else between there. And there shouldn't be. That, that's the right way of conf you know, making it. Don't, don't stick teacher in there somewhere. Or, or uh, government, or the pastor, or whatever. Because you need to be the in direct contact with the Lord. A, a home needs someone. Even if it's one of the, the believing spouse sanctifies the unbelieving. That's why you're not supposed to leave them either. If they're pleased to be with you, but if they want to go, and you're not allowed to sort of foster that. You know, I mean, that's not in good faith. You have to make a good faith effort. It can be very difficult. 
you know but even if you just even if you f- like lose it and you just can't i can't try with this person they're willing but i don't i i'm not willing i'm <laughs> i'm done now it's like i okay i don't know you know i no, you know, no sin is unpardonable, as far as I know, except for the unpardonable one. You know, and it's like, but we weren't going into that right now, because it's like I said, it's just because it's called the unpardonable. So it, you know, I think it was mostly because they stood before him, calling the work of the Holy Ghost the work of the devil, and there was just really no no going back from that. Yeah, I mean, once you've gotten that far, I mean, there is no for, there's no it's impossible. Yeah, because you can't, the very means of getting back to God, you've cut off from yourself. The Holy Spirit. You've blasphemed the Holy, this is a devil. So, you know, I mean, how can you get back? From, there is no going back from that. It's now people will say, oh, I, I should F the Holy Spirit or something like that. And I was a kid and I, and you did, that, that's not the same thing. It really isn't. Because it's like, he showed them, they were witnessing miracles. And then ascribing that power to the devil. And you understand, when I received the Holy Spirit, you know, I, imagine, I can't ascribe that work to the devil. That thing, or, you know, or how can I receive it then? The work of the devil? You know, it gives you no way to God. You know, here's, here's a miracle. Oh, it's the work of the devil. Wait, no, it's a miracle. Believe. No! You know, it's like it's, you've gone as far from faith as possible. They do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You know, this is a very high... I got, remember, this is setting the bar high. The, the last verse, I've gone astray. Hey, but he knows what a servant looks like. Because Jesus is that perfect servant. Jesus fulfills all this except for the parts about going astray. He fulfilled the service of God perfectly. And without sin. And that is also what we are called to. We're called to do this, to do no iniquity, to walk in his ways, you know? And for the most part, that's not hard. For the most part. You don't have to defraud your neighbor. Most of us got that down. You don't have to murder your cousin. We've got that, right? You know, you're not going to commit adultery. You maybe work out on the eyes, right? You understand that that's the level that you're being judged at? Sure, there's such a thing as false miracles, but you got to know the difference. That's the point. It's like when you see the work of the Holy Spirit, you have to be able to recognize it as the work of the Holy Spirit. And there is there are devils. But the thing is, is like he's the point was he was casting out devils. Yes, he's going to call down fire from heaven. He's not going to be casting out devils so much. I've often wondered, you know, like I've looked at guys who claim to be casting out devils. And it's like, like Benny Hinn and stuff like that, right? And it's like, and I and I tried to figure out, my, okay, the person who came up definitely seems, I remember one time I felt like he actually imbued them with a devil. Like that's what a normal person came up to him. And then he touched them and they started freaking out, which was weird. Yeah. And so there's lots of false signs and false prophets working, showing signs and wonders, if possible, to deceive the very elect. But the point is when Christ, but the thing is when Jesus is right there, he's not doing false signs. You know I mean? And he's there to testify of the truth, right? And so he's going to be um, telling them the truth. And so what he's saying is is like that, that to blaspheme that work, you know, the work of Christ. He had cast out devils, right? There are false uh, things. But, you know, we got to have discernment to know. We I don't think we would be guilty of uh, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Um, but you, that, I do think it's good to be careful you know, I don't go around characterizing people as being demon possessed who claim to be Christian. Unless I don't know, man. Sometimes maybe maybe I have, have I? Hope not. I want to be introspective about that. But I, I would think that special it's gotta be special because it was Jesus. You know, I mean, I always think there are a lot of things that are very specific to him. Like, you know, he said, sell all you have and come and follow me. It's like it's not something we think that is necessarily a commandment for all times. You know, I mean, because he, he himself even at one point was like, okay, hey, when you go on your journey, don't take a script, don't take a uh, two pair, you know, don't take any extra sandals or whatever, or extra cloak for your guard. You just go as you are, right? And then later on, he says, oh, now I say to you, take a script, 
all those things. And then he says, if you don't have a sword, go buy one, which is a, you know, and that's in Luke. And that's an unusual thing for him to say, as far as it's not something he says elsewhere a lot. And so things change. And so while Christ was walking on the earth, yeah, I don't really worry. To, in fact, I did do a study about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and I don't really think people are, at, you know, because I think people are overthinking it often. Or maybe they're being too, actually, maybe they're being too simplistic in their thinking, that they haven't really understood what, what it is they're doing. Like I said, it's like some teenager in his room saying those things and like, like being tempted literally by hearing about it, which is unfortunate. But if someone's seeking the Lord, I always tell them like, well, you know what? <clears throat> I think the blood of Jesus is so powerful. It forgives even the unforgivable. And, you know, and it's, it, you've got to come to him with the same kind of faith that that woman did um, when when he said it's not fit to give the children's meat to dogs. It, when I when I tell people who fear they've committed the unpardonable sins, I say, you come to him anyways and you say, God, I, I, I did, you know, because you have, you know what, you're still alive. And I think the reason they never have forgiveness is because they continue to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. If we stop our blasphemy, you know what I mean? As long as we blaspheme the Holy Spirit, I suppose, you know, men can say a lot of things and think a lot of things and be forgiven. But that, I guess not, right? But, like I said, I, I, I believe in persistence and prayer. If you want to just go away defeated, you know, I, I never believe in that. I, I'm not going to go away, right? Like the Jesus told us exactly what we need to do. Be like the woman who was the widow woman who went to the unjust judge. And said, avenge me of my adversaries. You keep saying, you keep going where you say, avenge me, avenge me. And the Lord is not unjust. And he will do for you. Just as it's asked here. Let's see if we can get a little more text in. Oh, it's an hour already. Huh? Hold on a second. That's important because we want to keep his precepts. We didn't do precepts, the word precepts. I want to at least... I want to pretend we got at least four verses in. So we're going to look at precepts before we wrap up. That's kind of a good a preamble to the whole thing because we are saved on the basis of faith, but we have much to do. We have much to do. We serve the Lord. We're his faithful servants. I want to be one. I want to be a faithful servant, not a lazy, good for nothing servant. That's so dist- that to be for that to be my Christian life and my story and my treasure in heaven. You know, what I mean? it's like don't you understand? Everything you're doing after you believe is treasure in heaven. Everything, not just you know, the, it's the relationship you build up with God. That's the best treasure you're ever going to have. Gold and silver are garbage. Like the Psalm says, I treasure, if you don't treasure it, I don't know what you're going to find up there. I don't know what you think you're going to find. It's a kingdom wherein dwells righteousness and peace. You can work with your hands and, and, and you can plant things and have them be fruitful. There's fruitfulness. That's I, I see per, the waters are flowing out of the throne. There's trees, life everywhere. God loves life. He wants us all to live forever, but the way we live forever has to be a very specific way because there won't be peace otherwise. And it has to be a kingdom also of peace. You want, you know, people look at the world, whoa, the world, blah, blah. it's like, yeah, you get it. But he brought it forth in mercy because he saw, looked on the children of men in the, in, before he even made us and had mercy and said, I can do something with these people. I know they're, 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 they're almost hopeless. They're almost hopeless sinful they go they go right and disobey from the womb they go astray but i will send my word to them and i will redeem them you know i will make them something different something new and something sacred and holy unto me that's kind of an amazing work and people like you know they don't even get it of course you know well, of course paul you yeah, <laughs> They don't get it. We mean they don't get it, Paul. I wanted to look at that word precepts, and I'm not going away until I do. All right. We got to make it for yesterday, a shorty study. Precepts, and of course, Dylan, I can't pronounce it. Picud. I think there's a double K pronoun. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, Picud. A precept. A thing appointed, a charge. Mm, properly. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't bring you along for the fun. 
Don't. There we go. Let's go back. There's the phonetic spelling. That's where you go to figure out how to pronounce things, you know. <laughs> a priest. I was thinking it's funny when people like I don't naturally know how to pronounce all these words, but when I go there, I, you know, it's like there we go. Uh, from whatever properly appointed a mandate of God, plural only, collectively. Hmm. So again, I like the idea of it's it's a mandate, something appointed. It's not quite. You know what I mean? It's like, um, I'm trying, like, like, it makes me think of like the things that are not, that are left sort of general. Like here's, you know, like a principle in the law. Like you got to do, you're not supposed to do these things. Like, the, like, like things like this, like um, having two laws, one for the stranger and one for the person born in your land. You shall not have to, you know, and that's a law, but it also institutes a kind of a precept. That, that, that goes further than just like, oh, what do I have to do? No, 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 this is bigger than that. This is like, what am I allowed to, what are, you know, these are appointed mandates. We know what mandates are. But anyways, it's a little different than a commandment, I, get, I, I suppose, or the law. Yeah, there's commandments, precepts, statutes, just subtle differences, but it's all about God's word. And that's very clear. And what he, the things he wants us to do and the things he wants us to know. And by knowing them, we become more like him, pleasing to him. And that, and that, that is the goal. I want to please God, not because I need to. I mean, I do. I, I feel a need to. But I know I don't need to in order to. I don't, I don't mistake and understand and forget the basis on which we're saved. But we still need to pursue these things. And we should be encouraged in them. You know, because and not and knowing we're not going to get all proud and thinking we're perfect when we're not. But we're going to just work hard and faithfully, humbly serve the Lord. Anyways, so we'll pick it up. I, I could probably squeeze us to the next eight verses, but we've taken a bit of time here. We should close it up and be back again tomorrow. I so said we're not going to read the whole thing again, but we'll probably read as much as I think we'll get through, which is just going to be a couple at a time. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Remember the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And uh, we'll be, be back again tomorrow. Thanks. All right. There we go. Thou art my portion, O oh Lord. Lord. I have, I have said, said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet to thy testimony. Delayed not to keep thy command.